I'm Greg Eisenhower, and uh, I play music from the Gulf Coast uh, of the United States. I play, play blues, rhythm and blues, swamp pop music, country music. And nobody help you with your back against the wall Whatever it takes, girl, you know I got Every type of music that I play, everything that I write is rooted in, in blues music. It, it informs everything I do and even when I'm playing the most country of my country material, it still sounds like blues and it feels like blues to me. I think uh, it's a cliche, and it's been said a thousand times, but, but blues really is a feeling, uh, not so much a form. So uh, I, I consider myself a blues artist because that, that's how it feels to me. Part of the thing I like to communicate with the audience is that, that this music is, is music that I learned playing in, in bars and clubs for people who were dancing and drinking and trying to get laid and, and talk to each other and stuff. And, and they pay attention to the band. It's part of the thing. And it's part of the feeling of being in that place. But it's not a like a concert. You know what I mean? This music, the way I learned to play, it wasn't like a, in a concert format for people to sit there and listen to is to motivate people to feel good and dance and feel comfortable. You know, I, I really hope, uh, I guess that, that's what I like to communicate, that people people feel good and loose and comfortable, you know. It's like they can be themselves. They don't have to, to sit there quietly. You know, sometimes you don't want to sit there quietly, you know. And I think it, some people in their show, if they, have a, if they have a fixed show, they build in a part where the audience feels like they can interact with the band by calling back or you sing something and they sing it back that's not really my nature uh, I like the whole door to be open all the time you know I want people to feel good all the time and feel like if they want to if they want to cut loose they can cut loose and if they want to relax they can relax and uh, hell if they can get laid I hope they get laid too we dance along to the jukebox Yeah, I think it was 1995. I was a sophomore in high school, and um, I've been playing trumpet uh, since I was a kid, and, and playing w with all a lot of people older than me. Uh, so I had some professional experience with that, and then um, I started uh, getting into folk music, and, and I, I started playing harmonica in a rack, you know, like a uh, thing goes around your neck, and playing guitar at the same time. And I really liked it. I didn't quite understand it. Um, and I got some misinformation about it, but I, I was able to kind of figure it out. And there were some guys to really help me along. And, and my, uh, I grew up in Vermont. I was in a small town of Vermont. And uh, eventually I found that, that I, I liked the, the, the vocal quality of the instrument, that you can play it in both directions, both breathing out and breathing in. And it was did things that other instruments didn't do and and I really liked that about it so I kind of started to focus on it more and uh, you know I was doing what I think all people do uh, when they get into an instrument they, it was before the internet was widespread and the stuff was out there so 
get an album and read the notes and it always refers to some you know i had a dylan album that referred to sonny terry and the notes of that one referred to sonny boy williamson and the notes of that one referred to little walter and the notes of that one referred to big walter and and i just kept tracking down the trail until you know i was hooked so i, I you know back then too you used to have to wait a long time a lot of record stores up there they didn't have they didn't have those records so you would order it and then you'd have to wait like a month or two months and, and that built up a lot of anticipation you know uh, i remember in particular my first big walter record which is live at the knickerbocker with with the blue tones and I, I had been waiting so long for that record and i knew that big walter was supposed to be awesome and when i put it on i i, I mean it was like you know we that time where your parents make you wait before you open up the presents on Christmas and, and then finally you open it up and it's cooler than you could have ever dreamed. And, and that happened and, and I, 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 there was also a really long wait to get my first George Smith record. And when I first heard George Smith, his harmonica playing really knocked me out, but so did his singing. You know, so many people had talked about what a great harp player he was. And it was true, he was <laughs> phenomenal. But his singing was so powerful and so, so personal. Uh, uh, I really, I really loved that. That was such a great feeling to finally get that in my hands and, and put it in the player and get to hear it. Frankly, sometimes you play places and, and the people, they are not listening to the words. They just want to have a good time. And sometimes you're playing places, they're listening to the words and they don't know what you're saying because they don't speak your language. So it should feel good, you know, uh, so that even if you can't understand it, you can still have fun. And if you can't understand it, that it, you know, some, something that maybe you haven't heard before, you know, I try not to try not to write songs like other people's songs, you know. My message is, is one of gratitude. I, I'm extremely grateful that I get to play this music, and uh, I'm extremely grateful to have learned uh, firsthand from the masters. And uh, the only opportunity I have to play it and share it is, is due to the people that like to, to listen to it. So I really appreciate their support and, and giving me the opportunity to, to do that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you is the word I'm looking for. <laughs>